just try to keep my head strong the whole time. Like I say, I try to stay confident, believe in myself. That's what my professor used to say to all his students. I like to keep that on my head and just train a lot, focus, train as much as you can and prepare myself for well, to, to do well in the tournament. Yeah, this, this kind of if of event is like it's pretty new for me uh, for me. But I like to always like make some challenge for, uh, for my life, and I think it's gonna be a good experience for me. I feel like I just feel the pleasure in the checkmate, you know, in, in outsmarting somebody to get the submission. No matter how it gets to that point, I feel like getting to the submission is where you feel the. The, the fulfillment of the jiu-jitsu and that's what I kind of tr strive to feel myself not about any competition or not about any opponent I feel like that fulfills me more when I submit somebody when I can outsmart somebody and when I can trap them that's where I feel like that makes me happy Otavio the steamroller, very intense game. Crow bowing guard early, close guard. Otavio incredible base here, controlling one sleeve to impede Crow's sweeps and submissions. No slamming allowed from the guard. Crow already trying to take the back. Nope. Here you might think about it. Crone looking for these optimum grips. He really has a nice closed guard attack. You'll see him climb his legs up really nicely. Go for choke arm lock combinations from within the guard. So throughout Crone's career, we've seen him really always be hunting for the submission. Sometimes oh, yeah. we've seen him giving up position and have oh, to pay the go. price for it. Yeah, he'll go. He'll go. He'd rather lose by a point going for the submission than win by a point sitting still. Big time. Guard is broken. Octavio splitting with the knee up the center. Crone using this kind of top knee block here to prevent any advancement down the middle. Kick away to break his grips. In Crone's corner we have Hicks and Gracie. Oh, Hicks and Gracie. And Octavio, legendary Marcio Fiatosa, the head coach for Gracie Baja. You know, Crone is facing an immense amount of pressure every time this young man steps on the stage. It's a spectacle. High expectations, sometimes not quite the results that he's looking for, but he's consistently putting his neck on the line. Yeah, he delivers. Say he trains so hard, and he's, um, you know, he gets in there, he's calm, and he's just, Crone's the kind of guy who just trusts in his technique and his ability and just lets his jutsu do the talking. You know, he's pretty emotional at the press conference talking about his dad and the role it's played in his life, the expectation, and what he wants. And it's great to hear that this young man is just continually trying to challenge himself to be the best that he can be. Right. It's incredible. Nice. Almost passed. Drone doing a great job of recovering. Out of bounds, they'll move to the center. They'll probably keep the same position. But these guys waste no time and getting after it. We're gonna see again if the pace is gonna have an effect if it goes past 10 minutes. Right. And besides the cardiovascular endurance, one of the muscles groups that becomes most effective when you get into the deeper minutes of the, of the match is the grip. Right. The grip. So that's something that these guys I'm sure are considering because you can do a five, six minute match and your grip is just fried. Right, so they're thinking 20 minutes. And right now there's a lot of grip fighting going on in terms of, look at this, breaking grips. Crone's looking for his, Otavio's using his, Crone's kicking his grip off. So that's one thing they certainly have to be concerned with. How the grip holds up. Otavio coming close on the pass. Crone shifting his hips out. Yeah, and these two have competed against one another as brown belts. Hey, Crone has been victorious twice. I know he subbed Otavio the first time that they, that they fought. We'll see what result we get tonight. Yeah, you can see Otavio's not very much um, 
He's not very keen on giving up the top position. He really wants to stay on top, it looks like. He wants to play the passing. Smash and pass. Beautiful balance once again. Crone jumping, close guard. Underhook here on the inside leg. Beautiful guard control for Crone. Beautiful the way he's... Oof, oof. Going for the sweep. When you think Crone's guard has been passed, his legs suddenly reappear in the party. And um, the whole process starts over again. You know, Crone is so intense. He fought with Buchecha, another man on this card tonight. Who outweighs him by at least 80 pounds or so. He ended up subbing, but again, when you watch the intensity with, at the beginning of that match, Crone on the top, on the bottom, attacking the neck, attacking the foot. The referee might want to pull them back into the center at this point, keeping the same grips, so they'll drag them over. Accidental knee in the head. Hoyler Gracie, black belt. Johnny Faria is the referee here tonight. That was interesting. So they were supposed to restart in the center of the ring here. And um, I guess there was no agreement on what the grips were previous to the stoppage. And therefore, they start standing. Intense grip fighting taking place right now. Again, this Big is going to take a huge toll on the grip as the match goes Tavia pulls guard. This should be an interesting shift of things. Crone's guard passing is very heavy. Let's we'll see how this goes. Setting up with these grips. Trying to control the center of Otavio's torso. Crone has incredible base as well, just like Otavio. Just incredible legs, incredible foundation here. And you'll see him start to work inch by inch to break the guard. Once broken, he'll split. And now Crone's looking to pin down this front leg over here. Six minutes have passed. We're just passing the 14 minute mark on my way down. Pace is slowed a little bit here with Crow on the top. Correct, but he's looking for the right grips to come around. Otavi's got that arm. You can see he's trying to set something up here. He's looking for a little deadly hook. Now it's coming back over the top. Crone doing a good job keeping the knee split. Otavio now has both sleeves. Crone has to watch out now with both sleeves controlled like this. It could be a quick shot for a submission, a triangle, because you have such good control of their upper body. But by grabbing both hands on one lapel here in the center, Crone is preventing any quick removal of any hand. Therefore, it won't be an easy triangle shot. Crone looking to creep up this lapel. This is interesting. If I had to guess, I would say Crone's going to come around with an underhook any second. Tavio has that arm, though. Correct. He's, yeah, that's a good point. He has, he has one sleeve. I don't know if he has both. I think he has both. Oh, he does have both. That's right. So he can't go through the underhook. Leg folds back in. A lot of crossover guard recoveries for both of them. Little foot to the face. <laughs> to go with that knee. Right. Ooh, he's going for the foot. Almost. He sat for the foot, but both, both uh, sleeves being controlled prevented him from having the desired outcome. Do you like that sitting back? Going to attack the foot or staying on top? No, to pass. I would love. Crone's on the bottom. I would definitely test the foot lock for sure. Crone missed it, but I would definitely go for it. You have to know because what if the person's foot is more sensitive than you know, Guidons or Calteras? You got to find out. There's no way to know until does, you go for it. But does Crone want to be on the bottom here, where he essentially gave up top position to? I don't think, I don't think he prefers it, um, but he knows there's time right now, so he's looking to, you know, demonstrate. Here he comes. Oh, there's a foot wrap. That's a nice and take. A sweep. Very nice sweep, yes. So he wrapped the foot almost in a footlock-like attempt. It's going to be very interesting to see these guys in deep water. Very interesting to see Crone if he continues this pressure. And how Otavio is. I've never seen him after 10 minutes. I have to say the match is pretty evenly split right now. I don't know who I would give yeah, the, in the terms nod of, to. Yeah. Again, but no points. 
No points, no nod, my friend. <laughs> no submission, no nod. I mean, only submission. So no submission. Uh, we can't even judge. We can't even judge the advantage right now because we don't even fully know their strategies. But, yeah, if you follow the conventional point system, you could certainly decide a victor at this point, but there's a reason why we're not doing that, which is sometimes it's not even a fair indication of what's going on. Octavio really stubborn on his double wrist grips. You see that? So now Kroll has his underhook. He's trying to flop him. He couldn't. Oh. That foot in the face is a little aggressive there. Yeah. Otavio's double sleeve control is ridiculous right now. He's on full lockdown. I don't think he's letting go anytime soon. His philosophy is if I keep these two wrists, at least they can't be used against me. I'm just going to constantly control the... And he's looking for a quick shot in that triangle, I'm telling you. If Krohn slips one arm in, one arm out. Yeah, that right arm, you can see Otavio's really pulling it. Krohn's yes. doing a great job of keeping it close to his body, using his head to keep that knee from coming across the front. Here it goes. We're here at the Viejas Sports Arena at San Diego State University, October 14th, the first ever Metamoris Pro Jiu-Jitsu Invitational. On the mat right now, 2012 middleweight world champion in the Gi, Otavio Suzo. And Krohn Gracie. We're at the 10 minute mark. So this is when things get interesting because traditionally in you know, regular jiu-jitsu competition, the 10 minute is the limit for black belt. So this is when both of them start testing their endurance, their grip strength. And the strength of their mind. If you're used to Big over time. and over again spending 10 minutes in a match and now all of a sudden you're at 20. Nice base. Great base by Kroon here. You see Otavio going for the underhook sweep. Kroon really doing his best to pin the legs here on the front side. But look at Otavio's grips. They're not letting up. Even the slightest. Oof, almost. Otavio looking for the sweep here. And Krohn frustrated by Otavio's duel. That's why you got to watch out for making a mistake with that frustration. Yeah, true story. Very Whole true. attempt. I mean, what Krohn needs to do is figure out a way to break one of these grips. Otavio's not letting go. He's got the gorilla grip locked in right now. He's not letting go anytime soon. So what Krohn needs to do is use a knee, ideally use one of his knees to break one of Otavio's grips and then start to advance for an underhook or look to control one of the legs. There it is, came under. He like, he's underhooked. You'll see Krohn trying to advance to a lapel. He has the belt with an underhook. Single underhook, other hand is inside. You gotta watch out for the triangle. Look at Octavio tugging on the arm, trying to get this triangle over here. Krohn has one underhook with the left hand. He grabs the belt behind there. He's gonna look to advance that grip. Here comes the knee split up the center. That wrist grip. My dad said something interesting. Oh, switch of the guard. Yeah, like we anticipated, no one's given up the pass, that's for sure. No, absolutely not. We've seen some sweeps back and forth, but we've seen really some amazing guard play from all three of the matches so far. But the stubbornness that they're displaying requires incredible energy. So these guard pass preventions up until this point have drained them. And we're going to soon find out how much. What an incredible event. So much talent. So much love for Jiu-Jitsu in this room right now. The energy is beautiful. So much talent amongst the fighters. So much talent in the crowd. Big time. Who do we got here? Mendez brothers are here. Jean-Jacques Machado, who's supposed to be on this fight card, is here. Salo Hibero. The list goes on and on. Eddie Bravo, Jean-Jacques student. Oh, here's Kron looking to take the back. Cross grip on the sleeve, over the shoulder back grip. Back to stand up. Again, the intensity of both these guys is impressive. You Very interesting. It. Yeah, not even a grip Otavio's given up. Oh, 
Crone looking to control the sleeve. And Crone cross grips the sleeve like this. He's looking to sweep or take the back. Octavio did a good job breaking that grip. Crone pulling up. Here it comes underneath. Nice underhook here on the deep underhook. Half butterfly guard. Crone looking to lift that butterfly hook. Octavio neutralizes, able to free the underhook and back out of it. Near pass. About five and a half minutes left to see if we're going to see a submission out of this match. How cool would that be if we went six for six in the submissions? I don't think we could ask for anything better than that. <laughs> but these guys are really pushing the pace, so. They are. It's just, you know, you have to respect the, the incredible guards of both of them. The simple fact that neither one can get past the other one's guard it is beautiful in itself. I mean, just the guard. And not that many sweeps are taking place. It's more pass prevention, attempted footlock, little reversal, and there they go back. Here's Crone again, trying to turn the corner. Octavio again, controlling both sleeves, looking to prevent the hands from advancing any. Oof, there's a wrap. Crone's gonna try to break the grip. There's a broken grip, there's the foot wrapped. There's Octavio trying to clear the hit. This is interesting. Ah, he's almost slipped out. Look at Octavio's left foot in the pocket here. Look at Octavio's left foot in the pocket. At the very least, that got the grips free for a second. Grone was after it right there. Yeah, another good attempt. Again, very that, good. that left foot on the bottom was really what The prevented. left foot went right under his hip area, went right into the groin area. And with the left foot pushing Crow in the hip area, uh, Octavio was able to essentially slide his foot out of it. Now, that kind of footlock defense is risky because you're pushing the attacker or the opponent onto the tip of your foot. And the further they slide out to the tip, the more breakable your foot becomes unless you get out which he did, and uh, high risk, high reward. Yep, here we go, Cone with the pass. So this will be the first pass of this match. Nice, high neck control, and the inside leg is dominated. Hip pressure. There he goes. Whoa! tired right now. Cone is in a great position. This is interesting. Three minutes and 47 seconds left. You see him trying to pick up that elbow. Is he going to go for the back? I wonder if Cone knows how much time is left right now, because now's the time to work it. Oof. That's what I love about this 20-minute format is we get to see that great work yeah, and someone's man. will dominate. Like, you would have never seen this in a 10-minute fight. Here comes Crone trying to step in, half guard. Oh, you guys, leg go. free. Beautiful freedom. Oh. Surviving that. Yes, Octavio nearly recovered half and then full guard upside down, but Crone was too clever. He worked too hard for this. Crone was like, I'm never letting those grips get back on, on my sleeves. Crone looking to attack the neck a little bit here. Knee on stomach, or oh, if Crone mounts, it's going to be interesting. Oh, he's got him, he's got him. Oh, Andrei Wow. Like I said, I think this, this match really has the potential to be the most exciting. The crowd really showing a lot of love for both fighters here in this. Right, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Ice Cream Crone Gracie.